Hello friends, this is Durga again from Technology Mentor slash IT Varsity and uh, as part of setting up uh, Hadoop ecosystem on uh, AWS cluster or virtual machine cluster using uh, autonomous distribution. So far we have provisioned the servers and then uh, we have set up Pambari on one of the nodes which is a monitoring tool and then we have taken care of HDFS uh, which is a distributed file system and then on top of that we have set up distributed processing framework which is the unpress map reduce and then we have taken care of other uh, framework like tests and also the, the uh, other tools which uses map reduce internally uh, but uh, can uh, provide better development interfaces like sql or data flow languages like hive and pig and also we have looked into scoop um, uh, which will actually copy data from uh, or between uh, uh, relational databases and Hadoop and then we have looked into HBase which is a low latency um, database on top of Hadoop. So we have gone so far, we have uh, implemented many tools using the wizard provided by Ambari and uh, as part of that effort we will see another product which is part of the core Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, which is Uzi. So Uzi, uh, so here is the agenda. We will uh, get the overview of Uzi. We will try to understand the architecture. We will try to set up Uzi using third party tools in, in for now Vambari and in future we might use other tools also. And we will see Uzi parameter files, Uzi log files and also the demo. So we are following the similar learning pattern which we have seen earlier. Uh, understanding the architecture, the daemon process that needs to be configured, um, the parameter files involved, the log files and also run a demo and validate that our setup is successful. So for daemon process we have something called Uzi server which comes with and also we need to have a database because Uzi have to store uh, uh, workflows in the form of XML files in some database uh, so we will see that and with it site.xml is the parameter file and we will see rest of the stuff. So Woozy is MapReduce based workflow tool. When I say MapReduce based workflow tool, workflow means uh, uh, defining dependent jobs in a proper flow. For example, if you take this uh, flow chart, so we are starting uh, in this pink circle which says, which, is, which says start and then we we might have to so to to implement a particular use case first we might have to run a map reduce job and then we might want to fork two jobs in parallel uh, which is streaming and pig and then we want to join the uh, uh, join the output of these two and then we want to decide whether to take any subsequent se uh, step or not if yes we have to uh, execute another type of a job in Hadoop ecosystem and in the end uh, uh, you might want to write uh, write it back to proper log file or write the output of the entire application into HDFS. Uh, so uh, the point I am trying to make here is to implement a application in MapReduce, to implement a business case or business use case in MapReduce, writing one MapReduce job is not good enough and uh, also writing using one kind of technology is not good enough so you have to mix and match different technologies and you have to run certain things in serial certain things in parallel so all these dependencies can be termed as workflow and Uzi is the workflow tool which uses MapReduce to execute this workflow so Uzi will create more MapReduce jobs to run this workflow uh, so that's why it is termed as Uzi uh, termed as a MapReduce based workflow tool uh, your workflow is a directed acyclic graph which will be written in uh, XML format. We will see a few examples later. It turns the entire workflow using one or more MapReduce jobs. Uh, so the problem uh, on larger clusters is even if you have two or three uh, client nodes to take care of submitting all the MapReduce jobs, they can become overhead. For that reason, uh, in very large clusters, it might be a good idea to distribute uh, even the um, uh, e e even the application application executions. So the client nodes will be just used to load the data and then submit the Uzi job. And Uzi job will be running on uh, 
uh, the entire workflow will be triggered off uh, on any one node in the cluster because OZ will be executed in the form of map reduce. So the load on your client nodes will go down significantly in a very large cluster. So it has two components, sketch. Uh, scheduler as well as uh, um, uh, developer or designer, workflow designer as well as scheduler. So in, in workflow designer, you will define all the dependencies and create the workflow and using scheduler, you can schedule it. So more than scheduler, uh, workflow designer is more uh, relevant um, because uh, uh, scheduler, you can integrate uh, with any enterprise scheduler. All the enterprises have schedulers like App, um, AppWorks, Control M, many, many other schedulers are there in the market. So you can use any scheduler to schedule the jobs, but to define the workflows, it's better to use uh, Uzi as it is MapReduce based uh, um, uh, workflow, ma workflow, MapReduce based workflow tool. That being said, so this is the sample workflow and the it will be represented in xml file so for each of these things there will be a tag there will be a start tag there will be a map reduce action uh, and then there could be a fork action which is another xml tag and then there, and there will be there are actions for pig hive etc so almost all the tools in hadoop ecosystem are supported by Uzi. and this is the architecture of the Uzi you will have a database for uh, uh, storing those workflows and there will be a Woozy server. So whenever you submit the job, uh, the Woozy server will go to the Woozy database, get the workflow and then it will use MapReduce to execute it. So in this case, we can have many masters, uh, one for uh, name node, the other for job tracker or resource manager, another for Woozy server. Or you can mix and match these things uh, uh, once you understand the dip, uh, uh, once you understand the implications of it. Okay, and um, the client should be configured to Uzi. Uh, so, and almost all the web interfaces which are coming up on top of Hadoop, like Hue, can actually understand Uzi, and they are actually trying to provide uh, better interfaces so that people do not struggle uh, in developing the XML files. Uh, with the plain hands so uh, we, we will see those things uh, over time but for now we will focus on the architecture and the setup of Woody and validation of it and once the job is submitted it will use our slaves to execute the job and uh, um, it uses uh, map reduce to execute and for, for the underlying jobs, if we, if it has to read the data, they have to they will primarily read the data from HDFS. So it not only uh, it can not only execute MapReduce related tools, it can also there are the, uh, Uzi actions uh, even for the shell commands. So you can invoke shell commands also using Uzi. So it is pretty flexible, but it is primarily developed for how to base tools. That being said, uh, we, we, we have a Woozy repository, Woozy server, and Woozy client. There will be nothing deployed on the slaves uh, when it comes to setting up Woozy. So again, we are going back to the original picture. At the bottom, we have Hadoop core components, HDFS for storage, and there are MapReduce tools as well as non-MapReduce tools. Okay. As, as part of the MapReduce tools, uh, we have Hive, which is a SQL uh, uh, interface for Hadoop. Pig, which is the data flow or scripting kind of interface for Hadoop. Scoop, to export and import data uh, to and from Hadoop. And Woozy, uh, to define the workflows. I will I will not be covering Flume and Mahout anytime soon, but over time I will add those things also um, and try to explain uh, about those technologies as well, uh, but sometime later. And then as part of non-MapReduce tools, the ecosystem is evolving. There will be many tools eventually, but for now, HBase, Spark, Impala are the most popular ones. And uh, we have already seen how to set up HBase in the past. So first you need to visualize any technology, first you, you need to visualize from this. Any Hadoop ecosystem tool will use HDFS for file system. And then you need to understand whether the technology is a MapReduce based or non-MapReduce based. If it is MapReduce based, you don't need to do anything on the slaves. If it is a non-MapReduce based, you might have to deploy certain things on uh, slaves. So very 
uh, important to understand the distinction between MapReduce based tools and non-MapReduce based tools. Once you get this uh, thing uh, um, into your head, it's uh, you will be easily understanding the architecture and you will be uh, easily deploying those things, uh, minimizing the uh, human error significantly. That being said, coming back to our six node cluster, we started provisioning with six nodes uh, in AWS or four nodes in virtual machines. In case of uh, six node cluster, we have three masters, whereas in VMs, we have only uh, one master. Um, but in both the things, we, we have configured M repository server on one of the masters, and then we configured M client on all of them, pointing to that uh, local M repository server, which have our uh, HDP as well as Ambari binaries. On top of that, we have a monitoring server. Uh, we have installed a monitoring server with monitoring database, which is Postgres database, and we have configured monitoring agent. All these are Ambari related stuff on our cluster for now. And then we set up HDFS, MapReduce plus YARN. These two um, have to be deployed uh, on both masters and slaves, different components on masters and different components on slaves. And then we have uh, um, uh, all MapReduce or YARN based tools like Tez, Pig, Hive, Hive requires a Metastore database to store the metadata of our tables. And then we have also set up Scoop. And then we have taken care of another master slave architecture tool, which is HBase, on both masters and slaves. And now we are talking about Uzi. And we will set up that as part of uh, uh, these few videos. And Uzi also requires Uzi repository. So we need to use the existing database or we have to create a new database. That being said, um, uh, we we will use uh, our um, we will use our uh, AWS cluster to set up Uzi. So let me uh, make sure that I have the cluster up and running. So we need to divide into two parts because it's uh, uh, it's not very straightforward to set up Uzi because it uh, uh, it includes uh, setting up the database also. So as part of this video, we will first set up the database and uh, then we will see how to set up uh, within the next video setting up the database is common across all the distributions so we will take care of this and then i can plug in uh, the respective distribution uh, for uh, setting up Uzi uh, using uh, either wizard or command line tools uh, going forward that being said i am logging into the gateway node and if you are following my videos um, i have uh, uh, set up MySQL also in this gateway node. So so I logged in and uh, we have uh, MySQL already in this. So mysql minus u root minus p. And uh, here, we will see show databases. Hit enter. And uh, there is only Hive, which is used for Metastore. So now let us set up a new database for Uzi, and it will be used while setting up Uzi later. Okay, for that I am creating a database called Uzi, and then I am creating user Uzi identity. So I have to give it in the single quotes. Uzi. identified by and then grant all on Uzi dot star to Uzi and flush privileges. So I will include these things in the scripts via for setting up Uzi as I have um, as you are already familiar with the uh, where I am sharing the uh, scripts, so I will share this one also either through email or in the shared drive. So now the database is set up. We have uh, uh, 
Uzi database, also Uzi user, and we'll be using those things while setting up Uzi using uh, uh, Ambari in the next video. And then we will also see how this can be done using uh, um, other uh, distributions as well. So before closing this session, let us validate that we can log in as Uzi minus p enter the password and we can connect to the database or switch to the database and then we can run show tables to make sure that there is no table created yet on this cluster that being said i hope you are enjoying the content so far on my channel i will not only focus on hadoop um, but also many other latest and greatest technologies like aws azure and many more over time so if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do so and uh, um, if you like the content of the video please click on the like button feel free to post a technical question or provide me the feedback in the comment section of the video thank you bye